<laughs> uh, oh man, I hope this works because last time we tried to do this, we were super distracted. We're, oh yeah, last time watching, we had a game on watching basketball. Yeah, it turns out that putting things in front of your face and then trying to do work is not the best. Yeah. <laughs> I realize more and more that I have a really hard time paying attention to shit. I'm just so bad at paying attention. Yeah. I literally have to like lock myself in a room at work sometimes just to get any work done. Yeah, I hope none of my bosses are listening to this. <laughs> that but but you're getting work done. Yeah, I get work done. I just yeah. have to. So that's myself. the good point. Just know that when I'm not locked in a room, I'm getting nothing done. Getting nothing done. Um, that's I'm right. definitely not recording another podcast at work. I tell you that much. <laughs> For sure, not doing any interviews during my lunch. Sometimes a little after lunch. Would never do that because I'm a good employee. I mean, if you're doing an interview during lunch, that's you time. That's what I said to my boss. He's like, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of you recording during work hours. I'm like, yeah, but I'm recording during my lunch. That's my free time. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to my boss the other day. I was like, if I was given hour lunches, I would be going on auditions during my lunch. Hell yeah, dude. That makes so much sense. Are like, you most, kidding me? And you most, know what he said? That's a fucking good idea. And I was like, the most of course it's a fucking good it's idea. I like, gotta set one up. Just walk out. Right. I've done it before. I was like, hey, I got an audition at this time. Let me take a lunch at this time. Mm-hmm. We're good to go, right? Absolutely, yeah. Man. And guess what? I got that fucking audition. Boom. Bitch. High five above the mic. Bang. Welcome back, y'all. This is MBA episode 45. It's the Jordan episode, kind what? of, sort of. Sort of. You know uh, what else it is? That David Mitchell episode. Bro, Just, oh my you God. You keep calling him David Mitchell, man. Donovan Mitchell. Respect episode. the kid, man. The kid I do is dominating respect in the playoffs. He's averaging almost 30 so points well. a game. He's killing it. The only the only reason he doesn't look like even more amazing is because Ben Simmons is also doing so somebody, well. Somebody I was listening to the starters yesterday, and somebody posed a question of like, okay, you got a regular season rookie of the year and a postseason rookie of the year to date. Who wins? And they were like, tie both times. Yeah, <laughs> like it kind of has to. Well, nah, Ben Simmons more so than than Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, but, but they've both been so fucking good. Yeah, it's been really fun it's to watch. Crazy. Um. Welcome back, y'all. This is the podcast that attempts to talk about NBA shit, but mostly we just talk shit. Um, Matt's not here today. He had some uh, other uh, things that he had to take care of today, so it's just going to be the brother-on-brother action for you today. Nikki and Jay talking NBA. Why did you think I was going to say yay? I don't know. It felt on brand. Well, um, as you heard in the beginning, we're watching the Cavs versus Pacers currently as we record this podcast. Is it a good idea? Probably not. No. But we're going to take a shot. We're going to take a shot because these games have been way too good. Um, and we don't want to miss them uh, because we want to give you guys the best tent that we can give you. And when I say tent, I mean content, obviously. Mm. Um, I thought you meant like a real circus tent. Uh, yeah. A real, uh, what's it? Three ring circus Should tent. Should we get a branded Yay Network tur- circus tent? I feel like that would be fun. Maybe it would be, be easier fun. for like recording purposes. We could just line it with like foam and shit. Yeah. yeah Ooh, now we're thinking. We now are we're thinking. thinking. I would love a miniature tent that just surrounds us. Just the three of us. And we're just um, in there. Yeah, because I see like. Just like rock climbing yeah, super hard. So good. <laughs> like when I'm Pinteresting it up. That's right. I said Pinteresting oh, it up. Gosh. Shout out to my Pinterest hoes. Uh, What's up, girls and boys? It, it, it's like in a love. It's a that. lovely way. I, weird, I just bro. don't worry about That's it. Weird. But on Pinterest, they always have like they always show you beds with like canopies on them, and it's pretty much just a circus tent. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's a circus that's, tent. That's a circus tent. That's a huge. And like sometimes it's like a small, adorable one, and you're like, oh, cute. But sometimes it's like legit you could fit a three ring circus in that thing yeah like you can have a lion tamer in that bitch and a couple of <laughs> uh, of elephants like it's crazy you're ridiculous boy yes i am let's talk playoffs man the playoffs has been super this has been such a better playoff than the last couple of years yes you know what that's not a super sarcastic i love the playoffs this year. <laughs> they've been so good um no but in all seriousness like the competition level has been incredible we've had no sweeps which has been great no yes we have oh there's one sweep there oh, was I'm sorry. One sweep. What a segue, huh? It was a sweep. <laughs> what a segue. <laughs> that bitch was a sweep. We had sweep. one sweep only in the first round, um, and that was the New Orleans Pelicans over the Portland Trail Blazers. Um, in the last game, they won by 20. Um, Drew Holiday and Rajon Rondo outplayed CJ and Dame by a hell of a lot. Um, they made them look really, really bad. Um, Drew Holiday pretty much like solidified his place on the all defensive team this year mm-hmm. just by, you know, Sticking on on Dame the entire series and, and really also just it on. Alvin Gentry came off as a fucking genius, which is crazy because a couple years they just said the other day they're going to extend his contract and like yeah. last year they were like, this is probably his last year. We're probably yep. going to fire him. Um, and yeah, they just like that team now. And the conversation that keeps happening is like, should they bring Boogie back next year? Because this team looks 
So really, good. really good. They finally have Anthony Davis playing the five, which like in today's NBA, he's the perfect five for he, the current NBA. He is legitimately the perfect five. No question. But like, no question. Demarcus, it's Demarcus Cousins. It's you have to play that really intro. Like you have to play that intelligently. You have to stagger their minutes. You have to make sure that one of them. This is the shit that like Scott Brooks and even Billy Donovan never learned with OKC. If you have two top five stars on your team one of them should be on the court at all times yes always stagger their minutes never don't have one of them on the court yes they're a matchup nightmare it's impossible for those guys to be guarded and not be of impact on the team's success yeah but and also i know it's i know this is definitely like a uh um an ego thing and all that shit but man if there was two stars on my team and one of them was pulled a Manu and was like, yo, let me just fucking sit on the bench and I'll come and kick sh- the living shit out of everyone in the second unit. DeMarcus Cousins could still be a goddamn all-star while playing on the second unit. One, you know that's not true. I know Two, that's not you possible. know he would never do that. I know none it of them would, would never do that. never happen. Ever, ever. But could you imagine that shit? It would never happen. If he was the anchor of the second unit? It's never going to happen. I know it's never going to happen. That's a silly thing to say about a basketball I know player. that. Who you is could, the top, who's the number one overall center in the entire NBA? Yeah, well, he can be the number one overall center even more so by just beating up on all the second string players. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. You're wrong. Um, so that team is perfectly orchestrated for Anthony Davis's skills. You have, they finally have Drew Holiday playing something that's a more natural position for him. You know, not being the ball handler, yep. uh, not being the playmaker, just scoring his points and playing defense. They're also finally at a good point in time to have Rondo on your team in the playoffs. You, that's the one player you want on your team. He's on playoffs. his fourth gear. Did you hear what he said about his gears? Yeah. He said the preseason is first gear, first half of the season is second gear, at post All Star break is third gear, first couple of rounds of the playoffs are fourth gear, and fifth gear is a championship. Yeah. So he's like, I'm on my fourth gear right now. Yeah. Which is like, oh, yeah. it's a great analogy. It's and, a solid it's analogy. It's great. And God, oh my fucking God, has he been looking good. And you know who else has been looking fucking good and good at the four? Nikola Miritich. Dude. But this is so Ricky and I talked about this on for the listeners who didn't listen to the uh, midweek mini so that we put on uh, the podcast on Wednesday. Um, Ricky O'Donnell, who's a reporter for SB Nation, writes about the Bulls. He and I talked about this yesterday where it's like, you know, the Bulls put him in a corner. They basically said, go be a spot up shooter. Don't do anything else. And like, remember when all those guys got hurt and he pretty much was like carrying the brunt of the scoring load for that period of time. We're yep. like, holy fuck. This guy's the, le- he's so legit. He's the real deal. And then everyone came back and he was shit. Exactly. And everyone's like, yeah, he's shit. They're like, yo, put him in the corner. Let him do his thing. Don't let him do like, and then don't what- let him create for himself. Like, don't let him just put him in the corner. Tell him to shoot. Yep. And then this year, what happened when he was on the Bulls for a little bit? Like, there was nobody else. So he was just like, fuck it. It's my time to shine. And he did that. He was so fucking good. I he, loved him ever since they, the Bulls had him. He went from a guy who they're like, he's probably going to go back to Spain next year. Yeah. There's no way this guy lasts in the league. To now, he's probably back to being a top 50 player in the league. I think he's averaging like two blocks a game, too. Yeah. I mean, during, he, during he that, I, mean I get it. Absolutely like, destroyed. nine times out of ten, he was blocking like Damian Lillard. But, like... Because Damian Lillard's like so much shorter than him, but he's he did so good on defense oh, and that yeah. freaking thing. Like it was ridiculous. And he's a good rebounder. Like he's he's playing, you know, solid defense overall. He's he's the perfect four for that team. Like yeah. being able to stretch the floor for Anthony Davis, being able to like grab rebounds aggressively. Because even when he was with the Bulls, like everybody knew, like yo, this guy is actually solid at grabbing rebounds. But he had a phenomenal series from a scoring perspective. Like I'm just pulling his numbers up here from the last couple of games that he played in the playoffs. So during the Portland series, he By dropped, the way, this is just four games, right? Four games, 16 and 11, 17 and eight, 30 and eight, 10 and 11. Like he was incredibly solid, especially in game three. Yep. Um, and frankly, when we look on the Portland side of things, like, Oh yeah. See, look at that four blocks in game one, two in game two, one in game three, three in game. Well, four. and look at the last five games before the season was over 25, 31, 28, 24, 21, 21 with double 21. digit rich rebounds, double digit rich. <laughs> I don't know. Double digit rebounds in three of his last five games. Like just absolutely is been on a tear. And he was, he had that potential when he was here as a bull. Now, when you look at the the Portland Trailblazers side of things, they Dame didn't come out to play, and this is like the second year in a row where he just has not come out to play. Yeah, I I also will admit like every single time he came up that floor, they double teamed him, and then if he passed it to C J McCollum, they double teamed him. 
if they passed it to anyone else, they're like, I don't fucking care. Try yeah. to shoot a three. They don't have many other scoring options besides those two. But honestly, that should be enough for most teams. The biggest problem was from a matchups perspective, like Rondo can still play defense when he wants to play defense. And when it comes to the playoffs, he wants and to. And he wants to play defense. I mean, he did the same thing last year with the Bulls against mm-hmm. Boston. Like he was playing really great defense against Isaiah Thomas and, and man, doing his thing. Could you imagine if he didn't get hurt? Oh man. Uh, no, I'm actually happy he didn't. Or that he, he did, did I should even, say. Yeah. Um but that being said, like you put Drew on Dame, you put him on CJ, and you've kind of I mean, then CJ got his points. I mean, he dropped like almost forty points in the last game of the series. Yeah, but he did. You know, he did real well that last. You knocked game. Dame out, and not only that, but like Nurk- think- Nurkic could not handle Anthony Davis. He could not guard him, and he couldn't big man him either. Like Anthony Davis is a, is a superior defender. Yeah, and you can't just you can't mu- out muscle that guy, even if he's a smaller defender. Like yeah. he just you uh, just like, can't. Who? I'm trying. to... No, there's definitely well, Demarcus Cousins could body Anthony Davis. No doubt, no doubt. No <laughs> but doubt. I was just like different type of player. Yeah. But I guess so. With that being said, when you look at the Trailblazers, you know, a couple years ago when they got rid of Lamarcus Aldridge, you're like, oh, they're going to be rebuilding this year. And then Dame just played out of his mind, and you know, the team they put together played well enough that they made it to the playoffs, and then they made it to the playoffs again. So they didn't really have to go through that rebuild. You know, C.J. McCollum ended up becoming a revelation, and you know, they're playing really well. But you know. It's one of those things where, like, Portland's not a small market, but it's not a a large market. Yeah. So the question remains of, like, okay, are you satisfied with just making the playoffs every year? Like, is it good enough to be fun to watch and make it to the playoffs and, like, maybe win a first-round series, but probably not? Probably not. Or do you really want to make a run for a championship? Yeah. You know what I mean? And if if it's the latter, what do you do with this team? Yeah. What it, do you do? A lot of people are, are, have been talking – um, and it seems like a lot of people are like, you're going to, they're going to trade CJ McCollum and like other players as well, obviously. Uh, cause th- their main thing is they've got so many fucking terrible contracts. That's what's hurting them. That it, so many shit ass contracts. Like they were able to get rid of that Alan Crabb contract. Remember and that when, was good. remember when everyone was talking about how terrible the contracts were on new Orleans? Yeah. Yeah. That's really fucking flipping a switch now. Yeah. Because they're terrible Well, contracts. the New Orleans contracts are so bad. Because Solomon Hill played no fucking... Yeah, no, he, he was... He didn't ter- do shit yeah. in, this, in this fucking series and has done nothing since no. he signed that contract. But, like, you look at Evan Turner. That's a big-ass contract. Mm-hmm. For a guy who's giving you minutes and producing to some level. But he's not really doing what they thought he was going to do when they signed him. Like, they thought that they were going to be able to run CJ and Dame off the ball. And let Evan Turner basically play the three slash, like you know, point forward. Like in today's yeah. NBA, you, you don't need a, and Ricky said this on last night's point, uh, uh, mini. So, which he made a good point, which is like, you don't really need a point guard. You just need a play generator. Yes. You need a playmaker. You need somebody who can get people the ball in the right spots. And yeah, traditionally speaking, that's been a point guard, but it doesn't have to be in this day and age. Cause a lot of these point guards are score first point guards. So yes. if you have somebody who can facilitate, that's really all you need. That's why a guy like Giannis or Draymond green can pretty much facilitate the offense. Yeah. While not being a traditional point guard, yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Do, Portland. Do they have one of the sellers and paid him way too much? They paid another. Mm-mm. They, Mm-mm. I swear, they paid a tall, not that great white guy. Uh, Plumley, but he's he's not with them anymore. Oh, he's no, in Den- he's Plumlee, in Denver no, now. He's in Denver. But they traded him for Nurkic. Yes, I felt like there was someone. Mm-hmm. I get them. Anyway, they don't have a Zeller or one of the other ones. Uh-uh. Zeller is one group where there's like nine brothers. What's the other one? The Plumleys. Is it the Plumleys? Yeah. Okay. And they got rid of Mason. Okay, eh, never mind. Yeah. I swear, I there's thought they had Mason, another one. There's Mason. I gotta look at their lineup real quick. There's Miles, Mason, and one other Plumley whose name I forgot. And there's there's 37 Zellers, right? Yeah, yeah. At so least I figured 30. At 37. least 30. You know Maybe what else? 42 Zellers. I just found out that there's a lot of. Uh, they don't all play basketball, but there's a lot of them. Uh, Adams, Stephen Adams, Marshall, Marshall Plumley was the last one. Marshall. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It was just, you were like, so your face was like, oh my God. I wasn't listening to a word you were saying because I was like, I'm going to figure this shit out. <laughs> your, I'm not going to let this go. Your face was so much like, oh my God, I, I remember the last <laughs> one. You're like, whoa. Like, uh, <laughs> yesterday at my job, uh, we opened the doors to a mouse just kind of hanging out. Uh, <laughs> and while, fun. uh, yeah. And while we were in the middle of trying to kick it out, a customer walked in. <laughs> And my coworker's face went from like, get the fuck out of here, mouse, to, oh, hell. 
it was almost the exact same face that you just made uh-huh. when you were like, I got it. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what I was thinking of? Zach Collins. Oh, Zach, yeah. But Zach Collins is fucking. He's, he's been doing He's going to be. Yeah. That's why I think like a lot of people are saying they'll get rid of CJ, but I actually think they're just going to let Nurkic go and let Zach Collins play the five and yeah. try to build around that. Like the thing is, because of those bad contracts, they can't really do a lot. Oh, Myers Leonard, too. Yeah, which that was a, that's another that's bad contract. It, that's the bad contract that's I was thinking really, of. They I'm gave sorry. him a lot of money. That was the one. They gave him way more money than he deserved. They apparently have Giorgio Papagianis in that team. Oh, oh yeah. They signed him and that. they signed Wade Baldwin, which is fucking like, yep. come on, man. Two failed first rounders. But yeah. that's where they're at. Yeah. That's where their team is at. So this begs the question, too, of like, okay, the rumor has gone around that this may be, um, oh, my God, I'm spacing on their head coach's name. <sighs> I've also spaced on it. Neil O'Shea is the GM. Paul Allen is, or yeah, Neil O'Shea is the GM. Paul Allen is the owner. Um. Oh my shit. God! What is the c- head coach? Where is it? Terry, Terry Stotts. Stotts. Terry Stotts. Aha! Yeah, I beat you to it. Yeah, you know you did, and so, also you memorized it. I googled it. Right, <laughs> Terry Stotts. So the rumor is basically like they're probably gonna let Terry Stotts go. Yeah. Which that guy's done a lot with a little over the last couple of years, like a lot with a little. Like he, they went on a tear later this season, and much of that is due to his scheme. I don't think that they should fire him. I really don't think that think that they should. Frankly, I think they should fire their GM because he put them in this situation where they can't build anymore because mm-hmm. they gave all these shitty ass contracts out. Well, also because they're freaking their their owner is just willing to pay all of that luxury tax. He does yeah. not give a shit. Which you know, you, sometimes you want that, but like you have to be wise with the way you spend your money. Like, yeah, it has to add to your yeah to your talent pool. And like CJ McCollum, potential All Star, Dame Lillard, like arguably first team All NBA this year. Um, I think I know. No, no, you know what? They they already all made their um, everyone made their votes before the 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 uh, postseason started. So, but I was gonna say, after this postseason, they probably would have jumped down to second. Or yeah, third. but you can't let that affect your yeah. Your and they already teams. they already made all the um the the votes. Why well, I think anyways, the word vote. The, the Blazers have been an interesting. I, I don't know, man. It's it's weird. It's like I said. It's like, are you just happy with being in the playoffs, or do you want to? Oh, good defensive play by John Wall. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I can't. I couldn't let that go. Um, I, do you just let them kind of just keep making the playoffs and make your playoff revenue, or do you actually try to change something? Do you try to make a move? Do you shake things up? Um, that's that's the real question that's facing the Blazers right now. Um, if there's any Blazers fans out there who know some good writers, I'm looking for somebody to interview. So uh, send us an email at theyaynetwork at gmail.com. <clears throat> also, I forgot to mention in the beginning, if you've gotten this far, um, turns out you're probably an, uh, a regular listener, and we appreciate you. Um, want to remind you, if you haven't already, please do leave a rating and review on your respective uh, podcast player. Um, huh? Do you want to tell them who we are? In the case oh they shit! I totally forgot. <laughs> we never did. <laughs> we didn't do any introductions. Matt's not here. We don't introduce boy. ourselves. Boy, oh boy! Um, eighteen minutes in. <laughs> eighteen minutes in. If you don't know by now, by my voice, I am Jake Hilas, aka Luca Don Quiche, aka since we're watching the Washington Wizards, my Ty Lawson. Ooh, I like that. one. Hey, brother, tell him your name. Hi, my name's Nikki Kilas, aka since this is episode forty-five, Michael Jordan in my mind. I'm doing all Bulls stuff. Let's get it. Aka Phil Lawful Jackson. <laughs> A.K.A. Hottie Toddy Pippin. That's a sexy drink. A.K.A. <laughs> Michael Jordan Steakhouse. Just, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm just kidding. It's, so I'm just kidding. This is what it is. This is what it is. It's the goat one. It's Michael Jordan Almonds. The goat almond. It's Jordan Almond. It's Jordan Almonds. Is it? Michael Jordan Almonds. Oh, it's Jordan Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> You're Ooh, I just came up with one. Bill Beef Wellington. <laughs> yo. Yo. Oh, keep man, going. Keep like going. Keep going. You what else we got? One? What uh, else we got? My name is Nikki Kiles, a.k.a. Peppermint Patty Mills. Bulls ones, but that's good too. Oh, you want to just do... I'm Let's so keep sorry. Going, uh, go ahead. You got one? Uh, no? No. I, don't I got one. It. Nikki Kiles, a.k.a. Dennis Codman. <laughs> Ron of Japan Harper. <laughs> killing it i'm having a good day i'm having a as good a day. chicago restaurant that's reference good. if you guys that's, don't that's know really good i've, got, oh, I've got a buddy who does it i'm just gonna i'm gonna stop really quick my buddy has a, a, <laughs> a he has a, a stand-up joke about rana japan where he's like i'm not gonna do the whole bit because i'm sure he'll probably become famous one day and do it but he talks about how rana japan it, it is an actual like fine dining japanese restaurant that's actually kind of expensive 
I Googled it. It's right. kind of expensive. But, like, he was like, I wish, Ron, in Japan, you walk in and there's just a dude in, like, American uh, Swisher pants. And he's just got, like, a headband on. He's like, hey, what's up? My name's Ron. Like, Zufa like, pants? Yeah. He's like, hey, what's up? My name's Ron. My buddies call me the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I know how to do fucking two things. Make the best top teppanyaki dinner in all of America and kick some fucking ass. <laughs> and I, I, the first time he did it, the second time he did it, and the third time That's he did funny. it. I died. Jacob Lowry, I'm sure you're not listening. <laughs> I know he's not a huge fan of sports, but... <laughs> oh, that's funny. Love you, buddy. All right, last question on the topic of Pelicans Blazers. How far do we think the Pelicans are going to get in this playoff? So if we look at the brackets right now, if they move on to the next round, they're probably playing the Rockets. Um, and we're just completely going over the fact that they have to first go past the Golden State Warriors. Wait, would they play the Warriors next? Yeah. Oh, you're right. They do play the Warriors yeah. next. You're right. Okay, so they would play the Warriors next, which, tough matchup. Yeah. Tough matchup. That, I think, is going to be a fun series. It'll be fun. That was the series I wanted to just watch right off the bat. Well, like two years ago, when, when the Warriors won their first playoffs, mm-hmm. they played the Pelicans in their first round, and there was the eight seed, and AD gave them trouble. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of Now, they didn't have KD back then, and it's still unclear if Steph's going to play in the second round, which he probably will because he's been shooting Steve around. Steve Kerr says he, he's very it's unlikely likely. to come back. Oh, unlikely? Unlikely. Interesting. He said don't expect him soon, which who knows? That means he can come back in game two. Yeah. And for some reason, Steve Kerr thought that Manu Ginobili and LaMarcus Aldridge was going to give him more trouble. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I think they lose the next round. Against the Warriors, because it is the Warriors. But I think they go six or seven. I think they either go six or they do, in fact, go all the way. It'd be fun to watch a long series. Oh, I would love a seven-game series between them. That would be so much fun. Rajon Rondo is going to be going... I... I really I, I love Giannis Antetokounmpo. Don't you get me wrong. Okay? <laughs> listen, listeners. I love me some Giannis. All right? But God damn it, do I love playoff Rondo. <laughs> it is so much fucking fun to watch him. The dismantling he did of the Portland Trail Blazers was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, he got 53 assists in four games. Yeah. That's insane. Amazing. 53 assists so in four games. Fucking that's good. fucking That's insane. That's so insane. Anyways, we, we could talk about the Pelicans all day, um, but I, I do want to move on to the next series that's been not, not entertaining by any stretch of the imagination, although there was two good games. Um the the game would uh, why, what I want to talk about is like I want to talk about the Rockets Timberwolves series for a second. Um, first and foremost, Derrick Rose has been on an absolute I don't want to call it a tear, but it's, he's he's given us a glimpse of what what Derrick Rose yeah. used to be, which he, is like really fun to watch. He's I mean it's only he's five for seven from three, which is sixty seven percent mathematics, uh, which is technically good enough for the second best three point percentage in uh, the playoffs right now. Obviously, he's not shooting anywhere near as many as other people. I think uh, Harden had seven in the fir- in the third quarter of the last Timberwolves a, uh, dude, fucking game. Fifty, points, 50 points, points in the third quarter. So it's stupid. Whew. Goddamn. Stupid. Uh, but yeah, he he has been looking so goddamn good. With Sixteen points, nine points, seventeen points, seventeen points. He's gotten some steals. He's getting rebounds. He just looks. He's got. He looks like he's got a spring in him. His legs yeah. again. He's which playing is so nice to watch. It, I never thought that, like, la- like last year, I never thought that the next year during the playoffs, I would be seeing so many posts about Derrick Rose running by people, rebounding, fucking bodying guys. and Even, getting, I'm, like, playing above average defense against James yeah, Harden. Yeah, like, he's playing pretty good defense, too. That's a guy, that, and he hasn't played exclusively on James Harden, but in the first game, especially, he was defending James Harden a lot. Yeah. And it was just like, holy shit, he's actually holding his own against James Harden. Yeah, and he was holding his own back when he was in his prime too, and uh, he was good enough. He, he, yeah, he was and good enough. he wasn't like he wasn't like as we I know we're not supposed to go back to it, but he wasn't like how Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum is, <laughs> you know. Get R, over the Blazers, R, man. R, not is. We're moving R. on to the next topic. Um, but yeah, he he was playing good defense, and he's playing good defense now. I. I feel bad because definitely the tonight there's another game for the Rockets Timberwolves. In case you guys haven't told, today's Wednesday, April twenty fifth. Uh, although we're gonna be releasing it later <laughs> on, but still, he, I damn Swiss just fucking blew up. I don't think nice. Sorry. I don't think the Timberwolves are gonna win 
Uh, I think it's done. No, it's over tonight. Um, no question. For sure. No question. Um, it, it's just, it's just, it's, there's a lot that goes into it, but like, it's just firepower. It's just yeah. firepower. Like Houston's got the firepower. Dude, you would have told me a couple years ago that a Tom Thibodeau led defense would give up 50 points in a third quarter. I would have called you the biggest idiot in the entire, you'd be the biggest stupid, stupid head in the world. Yeah. But then you'd again, stupid. Then you would say it's Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins are two of the big guys on that team. And then people are like, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause they're not good at defense. No. And so now that we talk about, so like, let's talk about Derrick Rose for a second and then we'll move on to the next like related topic is, um, a lot of people were saying this might be his last full year in the NBA and he's probably going to play in China next year. And this NBA playoffs has kind of revitalized his career. So do we think that like, do we think that this is going to revitalize his career and he'll actually get a contract from somebody? Yes. I think now he seems to be, um, paying attention, not paying attention. He, um, he, he seems to be realizing that he's never going to be starter Derrick Rose ever again, but, or he could become <laughs> six man Derrick Rose or he's like, I still got it. Look what I'm doing in the playoffs. Give me more minutes and see what I can do. Yeah. That's I, the trouble. That's the only trouble. I hope and I think what will happen is he's going to carve a good career for the at the tail end of his career as like the next like Jamal Crawford, Lou Williams that's, type player. Eh. So here's the thing. There's two types of former stars. There's your Grant Hills who are like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make the team win and I'm going to fall into my role. Even Penny Hardaway to an extent. Yeah. And then there's, there's your Allen Iversons. Like if I'm not starting, I'm not playing. I don't think he's going to do that anymore. I hope not. It seems like he's he's gotten to the point where he's like, I get it. He's 28. He's still very young. That is depressing. And he, his confidence level is high right now because he's playing really well in the playoffs. Yes. I have a concern that he's going to go to that, that place where he's like, I'm the youngest MVP in league history. I'm fucking Derrick Rose. I was a multi-time all-star. I'm still one of the best players in this league. I don't see why I can't still be one of the best players in the league. I have a concern. Now, me secretly, I hope he sticks in Minnesota next year. I got it. I hope they bring him back. Tibbs Tibbs has a way with him, and I think it's they really, have an understanding. Yeah, they just Tib- they, they get each other. Thibodeau really is the rose whisperer in a yeah. sense. <laughs> that's that's uh, well, gotta be the uh, that's according to Kevin Harlan, Reggie Rose. <laughs> what was that about? I don't know. What was he, Which it's funny because his brother is actually named Reggie. Well, people kept making jokes about it because it didn't sound like he was saying Reggie Rose. It was sounding like he was saying Reggie Rose, like he was fucking yeah. rising into the air. It's like he just the way he said but it was so weird. Then he ended up saying like Reggie Butler. He said Reggie Wiggins. He said Reggie Paul. Reggie Harden. Like I missed that. Oh, he said everyone's name Reggie and then their last name. But because he wasn't doing, I'm sure he was next to Reggie Miller. So I'm assuming he was being like, Reggie, look at Rose's three. But he kept on saying, Reggie Rose for three. And he was like, wait, what? No. His mind wouldn't stop thinking of Reggie Miller Something's as wrong. everyone else was scoring. Maybe he was having a stroke. And then in the third quarter, Reggie Miller was like, it was a great game last night by Marco Rubio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Marco Rubio has not had a good game, a good day in a while. <laughs> All right. That's so good. Yeah. I love that. Uh, but yeah, or off the court. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so looking at the, looking at the series right now, like this is the thing that nobody's saying it. Well, plenty of people are saying this, but like the Rockets has to score 50 points in one quarter just to win that game. They looked terrible in the first half and they have looked just okay. This okay, entire place. Yeah. Just, just okay. That, that game was like the ultimate Harden game. It was one half of like, man, Harden, if he's not getting 22 falls, points, it, 22 points in one quarter is but, insane. But the first half. I think he had seven points or something like that. Well, he finished with like thirty six. So like. I think he had eleven points. Is what it was in the first half. It was second in the. It was uh, seven in the second quarter or something like that. And I think four in the first. But he was terrible in yeah. the first half. And it was a very much like he wasn't getting any foul calls and he wasn't making any shots. Yeah. And all of a sudden in the third quarter, I think he was like, "Oh, they're not calling fouls on me, so I might as well actually start hitting my shots." And all of a sudden, it was just like, "See, look at what James Harden can do." Yeah. Um, it was kind of annoying, but also kind of amazing to see it happen. Th- his problem is that he's just been like, he's been tried just trying to cook people. Just yeah. Sitting at the top of the key, trying to cook everybody. And like that offense is not made for that. Like he needs to move. And yeah. He needs to move the ball and he needs to move without the ball. Yeah. He and needs, he needs to get picks by Clint Capella. Yes. Clint Capella, I will say is outplaying the fuck out of cat. Well, cat's getting no shots. Cat is doing nothing. L- listen, I love Derrick Rose as much as the next Derrick Rose fan, but Derrick Rose cannot get 
42 percent of the shots in any game and K- there's no way that cat should be scoring 13 points in a two game span yeah it's insane but what happens is every time they gave him the ball cat gets double teamed and he doesn't know what the fuck to do I don't, but it's, you, you got to continue to feed that guy because the thing is, go ahead and double team him. You free up somebody else. Yeah. You free up somebody else. And you would think that would work, but the first two games, he just wasn't like, he would get the ball down low he, and dude, he, he would, only got the ball like nine times yeah. in game one. Yeah. Like, it, you can't get, you got to get on the ball. Second more, best player, sure. a guy who scored 56 points, not even a month ago, fucking nine shot attempts. Yeah. You can't get, you can't do that. Yeah. He definitely needs the ball more. And that's something that Tibbs has to correct. In, in the locker room during the second half. Like, you have to go in and be like, guys, Cat has six shots. Give him the fucking ball. Get him the ball. Now, yeah. third quarter, opening second, the first person you pass the ball to is Cat. Second person, Cat. Third person, Cat <laughs> again. Give him the fucking ball. Yeah. He's the best. He's the second best player you have on your team. And Jimmy's not completely healthy. He's yeah. the healthiest player you have. Go after him. Go get it. Yeah, for sure. It's just, um, yeah, it's it's insane, man. It's just, it's crazy to me that 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 a team with those types of players on their roster, like their top six players, arguably are better than the top six players for the Rockets. Arguably. Uh. Yeah, I guess so. Across the board. Now the problem is they don't have any depth. They have no depth. Yeah. And Tibbs is kind of he's locked in. I was really six trying to be guys. like, no, that can't be possible. Well, but- like. I mean, um, Harden and Chris Paul are both better. Yeah, than, I was saying if we're doing top, so number one is Harden, Harden, number two is Paul. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy. and then Paul, Jimmy. then CP3, and then, then Cat. Cat, then Wiggins, probably Wiggins, and eh, Capella. Well, yeah, because Capella's, Capella's way more valuable. He's also playing so well right now. Yes. You got to go Capella. Capella, then Wiggins, just barely, just barely, maybe yes. even Taj. Yeah, Taj isn't scoring very much though right now. But he now. does what or, he does. Yeah, he's he getting some he rebounds. He's a glue guy. He's the ultimate glue guy. Right. Um, I mean, he showed his value in the last game of the season. Like yeah. that's what he does. That's Weir- weirdly enough, I I think Derrick Rose is up there right now. He's, he's, I mean, based on his way he's playing in the series. Yeah, he's but you know been what I'm saying? So like well. from the way that guys are playing now, there's other guys on like because uh, uh, Ariza and Gordon are just. In, I have not in, been paying attention enough to how Gordon's been playing to know it, specifically. It, but. He's not really. Well, he's not really doing anything. Yeah. Well, if they're not, that's a problem too. Is like. Game one, like Harden had to drop forty four, and then game five, they had to drop fifty in the third quarter just to win. It's just, yeah. it's chaos. But anyways, um, game four, yeah, today's, was it game four? Oh, yeah, today's, today's game, game five. five. So on to the next topic. So and the Pacers and Cavs are playing right now. Uh, the Cavs are currently up sixty one to fifty nine. The There's other day, seven minutes and twenty nine seconds left. Now you know what time of day it was that we're recording this. <laughs> uh, so. The other day, they had a chance, and they were up by quite a bit going into the fourth quarter. Um, they had a chance to go up 3-1, and then Kyle Korver just got really hot in the second half, and the Cavs basically stole one from the Pacers. So the question is, did the Pacers fuck up? Like, did they ruin their chance of winning this series? I don't know if they ruined their chance because legitimately I feel like I, – isn't, like, the second highest scorer on the Cavs right now – like Kevin Love, who's averaging like 15 points a game. Mm-hmm. So like, they definitely still have a chance. I so I agree with that. I think even though this they series, lost the Pacers had like six guys in double figures. Yeah, I think this series goes to seven games. Uh, I, it's really hard to bet against LeBron James. That's the thing. It's um, like you put LeBron James down three to one. That makes things much more difficult. But yes, you now. But also, it wouldn't two, be the two, first time he came back. It's two two, and they have home court advantage. Being the higher seed, yeah. Now you're putting the ball back in LeBron's court, yes. And when you put the ball in the King's court, traditionally speaking, he does well. Like, yeah, he hasn't not made it out of the first round since like 2004. Yeah, like he's going, he's gonna get out of the first round. That's what he does. It's very, very difficult. I mean, hell, this is the first time he didn't sweep the first round in three seasons. Right. Like it's been a while. It's crazy. It's been a while. That's, so, why he, that's why he's constantly fighting to make sure it's never just the best 16, 16 yeah. teams. He just wants the East versus West. <laughs> it's like, no, I need I need to relax before I got to go play the West. The West's got a lot of good teams I don't want to deal with at first. Yeah, the Pacers just like, they, they, they got away from what they do, which is moving the ball well and passing a lot in the latter portion of that game. And Victor Oladipo just kind of, he got lost a little bit. He just he just was just jacking up every shot possible, yeah. um, which is to his detriment. Like he he can't do that to be effective. He just can't. Their their whole thing is they play really good team basketball. They move the ball. They play really good defense, and that's why they're winning. And that's why they're so fun to watch. That's why like we were talking about this before we recorded. Damn, Miles, 
God damn it. Sorry, Miles Turner just turned over the ball and made me He mad. literally kicked the ball out of bounds. Um, but, like, you know, part of the reason – this it's, it's difficult because you look at the Cavs and you're like, you kind of want to see LeBron in the championship because he's the best player in the world. Yeah. You want to see that. But there's that side of you where you're like, sometimes you want to see – like it's fun to see Goliath get beat. Yeah, you know what I mean. Also, it's like you want a little pariety. That's the big word of the day, folks. Pariety. It means equalness in a sense. Oh. Like I just, I just, what I want. Like if you look at how the champions have been, championships have been won. It's like the forties were, or not the forties. The fifties were like the Lakers. The sixties were the Celtics. The seventies was the Celtics and the Lakers. The eighties. Sixers for I think a couple, but it was one, one, one championship, one championship. Lakers but it was Celtics. Lakers, Celtics again. The eighties, was it? No, well, you just I mean eighty. The nineties were the Bulls, Bulls, and then early tail end was Lakers. Lakers. You got the Spurs in there for a very mm. good amount of time, and then it was like LeBron James Heat, Heat. and then now you gotta go the Warriors, and then but LeBron this is not the NBA always. Goes. Goes. Yeah, this I know. It would be nice to see. It's not gonna happen, but goddamn, would it be nice to see like the Raptors versus the fucking Rockets? Hell, it's not gonna happen. The Raptors are not making it to the fucking finals, no. Man. They're they might not make it out of this series, dude. They're losing to Washington again. Yeah, they were looking real good at first. Uh, I guess that's what uh, Drake gets for saying he wants he's gonna bring a broom to Washington. <laughs> like, <laughs> you there's only two games. Calm the fuck down. Yeah, um, um, good board. Yeah, um, it's. I don't know. It's I don't see anybody beating either the Warriors or because, like we said, the Rockets don't look good enough to beat the Warriors no, right now. They look really shaky, man. They no. just look really shaky. They're not hitting a lot of shots overall. Like, granted, Chris Paul had a great third quarter the other day, and 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 James Harden had a good third quarter the other day. But yeah, the team is. I don't know. There's there's something wrong with their continuity. But also, if they, they have look, a history of this, dude. Yeah. Fucking Chris Paul has a tattered history in the playoffs. Mike D'Antoni has a tattered history in the playoffs. James, James Harden, Harden has a tattered history in the playoffs. Yeah. They have three guys, Te- and that's their thing. Technically, Nene has a tattered history in the playoffs. Of that <laughs> Nene, shit. Nene, good lord. Um, oh, but man. you just kind of look at their guys, and it's just like they just have a history of that. Um, Next thing I wanted to talk about was the Cavs wearing matching suits to two straight games. Now, I don't know if they did it tonight, but they did it for two straight games leading into uh, in this series as they were down. Yay or nay, a team wearing all matching suits. That reminds me of when I was in like high school and our coach was like, we're going to be professionals. We're going to wear button-ups and <laughs> and and uh, ties before every game. Oh, and then Lord. like... One day during like my summer baseball league, our coach was we I legit like we asked him I was like is there anything we need to wear to go to the games and he was like your fucking uniforms you weirdos <laughs> and we were like well no before the game should we show up like right. dress and he was like no he was like you know what <laughs> this is shout out to Mike White you crazy motherfucker uh, he was like you know what I would love to do he's like our team's not good enough but hopefully one day we'll be good enough. Where we can show up to a game two minutes before the game's supposed to start <laughs> on a bus, a school bus that's painted pitch black in orange jumpsuits. <laughs> and then we that. unzip the jumpsuits to reveal that. that we have our baseball I'm uniforms underneath and we just go out and we kick the shot. He's like, we're never going to be good enough to do that. <laughs> but that's my goal. I, that's I was weird. like, I would rather do that. That sounds fun. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Like a lot of fun. And then with that being said, I saw the price tags on the suits. LeBron, buddy boy, if you want to send me one of those motherfucking suits. They were all custom made. Custom made. All custom made. I will fly to Cleveland. It's also like only like a six hour drive, I think. It's not far at all. It's, it's like not that far hours. from Chicago. Also, um, shout out to uh, Network, Jason Concepcion from The Ringer. He pointed this out on The Ringer des- NBA desktop today. Um Kevin Love has a deal with Banana Republic. Yeah. Okay. He's not supposed to be wearing something that's not banana. He's got a page on the Banana Republic website about his favorite Banana Republic items. <laughs> like, isn't that against? That's a, that's got to be a breach of contract. It's got to be. That's also like the whitest sentence I've ever heard. <laughs> Kevin Love's Banana Republic page. Look at, look, at, look, at, look, at, look at Drake and John Wall going at it. Drake and John Wall going at it. Go okay. Uh, go ahead, Drake. It. Go ahead, Drake. 
Go ahead, Drake. I Drake. love it. I love it. I love how much shit he talks during the games. And you know it's great? fun to watch. I, uh, the the seat guy that's always you can see him right now. Oh, yeah, he's he right there right to there, the right. Yeah. He's dude. He's been um, a season he was in, since day one. Yeah, he was also in Washington for both games. Yeah, that guy's awesome. That guy. I would he love was on to the starters meet. A couple as, ago. I know it sounds dumb, but I think I'd rather meet him than Drake. <laughs> That's true NBA fandom right there. Yeah, true NBA it seems fandom. like so much fun to meet that guy. So it sounds like you're a yay on the suits then. I'm a sucker for suits, man. You're a sucker for suits. Yeah, I love are. suits. Yeah, you are. All right, let's talk about something that happened this week. This past week was 420. Um, some of you may have celebrated. Don't call it a holiday. Don't be that guy. Don't call it a holiday. It's 420, <laughs> okay? It's not a national holiday. I did. I was at work on that day, like at my real job at, at, <laughs> at the bank. And one of the customers was like, hey, man, have a happy holiday. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was just like, he looked like a huge stoner. He also reeked of weed. But he said that to me, and I was just like, oh, but I've got a bow tie on. (laughs) Do do I not? Do I not hide well? <laughs> do, do all the customers know? It's your facial hair and your hair, man. You look like, you're a, you look like a rock climber. Right? Um, so in any case, um, there was a panel of former NBA players that actually talked about their use of cannabis during their career and, and basically advocating for their career. So I know you watched it and I watched it. What were your initial thoughts? Like what, what feedback do you have on kind of the video and like what you saw in there? It was interesting. Um, also like... The, oh man, I forgot his name. The old GM, uh, not GM. The old uh, David Stern. Um, he even said he's like, just fucking make it legal. Who cares? Did you see when Al Harrington uh, uh, interviewed him about yeah, cannabis yeah. and shit? That was fucking hilarious. Yeah, I, he acted like he tried to pretend like he had never seen weed before. Yeah, it was <laughs> he like gave him, he gave him nugs, dude. That was fucking great. <laughs> and it was like at this, it's. I get that you don't want them, but like a player, if someone gets high before a game, that player's a fucking moron. Just like if a player were to get drunk before a game. Well, so here's the thing though. Weed is one of those things where like, so, and Matt Barnes talked about this during the roundabout where he was like, yes, I smoked before most games. Yeah, I did. He's like, and it was kind of my thing because there were days where I wasn't feeling good and I would just smoke a little weed and like, you know, Kenya Martin said he smoked weed because he thought I wasn't going to play. And then they ended up putting in the game. He's like, it's like, I had like 20 and 10. I dominated. He's like, because I wasn't overthinking things. And also my knee was hurting it. But what I wasn't feeling it after I smoked, he's like, it's just a really good way to help with easing. The thing is like, these guys put their bodies on the line. Maybe not nearly as much as NFL players, but they put their body on the line. Like it is a physical sport. And like, there yeah. are bruises, there are aches and pains the day after. And it helps. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's I mean, a means it- to help with pain. I'm very I'm very much an advocate for it. I think sure. it's uh, look, it it helps with fucking PTSD, with depression. There's so many a benefits lot. from it. Not to mention like if it became legal, like I think I feel bad cuz I don't remember the exact. I think it's 41% of drug arrests are weed related. A lot. Like most most and it's also most weed related arrests are of black men and then they're going to be thrown in jail. Hey, he was freed. Meek Mill was arrested on a drug arrest, which I just found out actually is about to get reversed. Yeah. So I heard like, apparently the judge was like super sketchy. The judge is sketchy, and the guy who arrested him got arrested because he was a crooked cop. Right. Uh, there was a lot behind. Like that there was. A That's lot. why everybody was literally like freak Mill, free me. Like, dude, one of the owners of the 76ers was one of the ones that he was the one out. who picked him up. That's insane. With a fucking helicopter. I love that shit. Kevin Hart and one of the the, the uh, minority owner of the, of the Sixers. Sixers. And I saw the video when he landed. Like all of a sudden, like these two random like yeah. little white girls like were like me. And hugged him, and I was like, "Who is that?" And it turns out that they were the owner's daughters. Like he's like just a, they all love him. He's they a great guy. He's a Philly guy. They literally like were taking care of his kid while he was in there. Like it was crazy, and it was over a stupid. He got arrested over a drug charge that was like like weed drug charge or some shit yeah. that wasn't even. It, I think it was like less than a year uh, sentence, but then he's been on probation for almost twelve years now. Yeah, so, like. That's fucking bullshit. Yeah, it's crazy. Just, I'm not saying you gotta make meth legal. That shit's clearly got some problems to it. <laughs> Weed is not that bad. Make it legal. Just, if someone's dumb enough to get high on the job, that's their own fault. Especially if they don't do well. If if Kenyon Martin got 20 and 10 while high. Dominated. Dominated. Good for him. 
yeah, it was it was funny to hear the guys talk about it. And honestly, it's just it's just great to hear that like the NBA doesn't have any other drug problems, and weed is not one of them. Also, like yeah, it's just you're not, not gonna add, you're not gonna try to add that to it. Um, I love how they said eighty seven percent of the NBA smokes. At they're least. like they're at least eighty seven, but just none of them talk about it. Yeah. Also, shout out to Clay, <laughs> 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 fucking. Because oh, I know man. the second that they are like, the NBA is just like, yeah, we don't fucking care about my pick. Anymore. My pick for like smoking before games is probably Draymond. That's my pick. Yeah, that would make sense. That's my pick. I, I think Clay's an after game kind of. He's like, no doubt. He gets himself a chocolate milk <laughs> and, and <laughs> like. His sister with his toaster. <laughs> yeah. And with gets toasty. Toaster, he just gets, gets toasty. toasty. Yeah. Um, so the Jazz went up 3-1 the other day. Mm-hmm. Definitely want to talk about that because the Thunder have looked God awful. They have not looked like thunder. God awful. They have looked like a drizzle. Yes. The, okay. Yeah. You it's clearly true. don't understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, they've they've been bad. Oh, speaking of which, Rush just showed up on the camera or on the TV because <laughs> um, of the uh, the awards. The now NBA we talked awards. about this a little bit before we started recording. Let's talk about Rush for a little bit. Um, <sighs> if you're a player in the NBA, would you enjoy playing with Russell Westbrook? I think if I'm a player like Steven Adams or Andre Roberson, yes. I think Andre Roberson, maybe not so much Steven Adams. I, you know what? Legit, I think Steven Adams can do completely fine on his own. He can, Steven Adams can handle he's, himself. He's a quality center. If he's he gets a the, good if he fucking gets, center, if he gets but you looks. have to give him the ball. You got to give him looks. Yeah. You got to do it. He, I mean, and the, like, the percentage of offensive rebounds he gets is fucking amazing. He, he should, in all honesty, I think he could be averaging 20 and 10. Yeah, twenty is a stretch. I would say probably Fine, like closer 15, to 16, 18. 17. Yeah, I'll give him eighteen and ten. Yeah, no, he's solid. He's a, he's a solid. He's one of the top ten centers in the league. Yeah, by far, no question. Yeah, Russ has been pissing me off because like this is what we've seen the last couple of years, and this is part of what drove KD out. Is like Russ only knows how to play at one speed. Yeah, and during the regular season, it's so much fun to watch him just like a blast go out running rampant, like pulling up from mid range. Going at the basket, being athletic, but in the playoffs, it's much more difficult to play that style of basketball. Like you need to move the ball, yeah. you need to play defense, you need to set screens for your teammates. You and need to you need, you need to, to move things. off the ball because that motherfucker hangs out pretty much at the it's logo so if he doesn't have the ball. And I, I was watching the game the other day. He was like hanging out at the logo without the ball. He literally. Went from the logo to the three point line, yep. and that like they were double teaming Paul George, and they almost both like started leaning away from Paul George, and Paul George had the fucking ball, and they oh, were yeah. like Russell Westbrook's at the three point line, be careful for him. Yeah, could you imagine if he just did that consistently? Right, or just That's cut to the fucking hard. basket. Just cut to the fucking basket. He's it's it's frustrating to watch that I'm because terrible like terrible at basketball, and <laughs> I at least cut. He's not. He's just not getting his teammates involved. Also, like. Mello is a shell of himself. He's not he's not even making his like catch and shoot three pointers anymore. Like ones where he's got wide open yep. looks, he's missing. They're, he's just missing everything. They're slowly starting to treat him like they treated Andre Roberson last year. I mean, that's, just, a, that's a that's, that's a stretch. A stream. I know. That's and that's like a re- that's a real fuck you to Carmelo, but he has not been doing very it's, well. It's been tough to watch. They've been really bad and meanwhile the Jazz Now, we talked about this earlier too. Like the Jazz are a terrible matchup for them because Rudy Gobert is the best defensive player in the league. And Russ only likes to go to the basket. Yep. Like not only, but almost exclusively that's, likes to go to the basket. That's how he gets most so you of have games. a guy who like always wants to proceed with just like pounding it in the basket, getting to the line, like getting his layups, being athletic, being stronger than the next guy versus the best defensive yeah. player in the league. And guess what? Gobert's winning. Russell? Gobert's winning, and their perimeter defense is winning. Yeah. Their defense as a whole is winning. They move the ball well. Ricky Rubio is playing amazing. He is doing very well. And he, he, and he I am very baited, happy for him. He baited KD, or KD, he baited Russ into that foul yep. in the first half. The, like, the fact that KD, like, ugh, fuck, I keep saying KD. The fact that Russ got four fouls in the first half is just a testament to him not understanding, like, 
how what the way that the game is currently flowing and being able to adjust like he, he only knows one speed and, and, and it's he so needs, hard to watch he needs to listen to michael scott this isn't football it's not rock and roll it's not bam uh, bing, bam, bang, bam 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 boom. no it's bing bang jazz it's ba 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 scat ba ba scoop do ba ba zip it do 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 wa ba boo boo do ba scatting anyways um the question that I have is this has like this pretty much guarantees that PG doesn't come back next year. Like how does Paul George come back after this fucking disaster of a first round? I don't fucking know. Like he he had his first game I mean, he playoff even, P and all that shit and he's still playing well, but he's it's like, averaging 27 points on 67 or 62% true shooting. He's great. He's great. He's doing very he's great. good. He's great. And I think he's also averaging like two steals a game. He probably is. He, he's again, he is playing well. And he's fitting into his role, but it's got to be hard to watch this guy do exactly what he did for years and just, like, not play within the construct of the team. Just not at all. And it's really fucking frustrating. It's It's so frustrating. It's not not fun to watch, which is sad to say. It's bad. I kind of hope that they lose in the first round. I think Billy Donovan, unfortunately, is going to – not unfortunately because he hasn't been a great coach in my opinion. I think he hasn't put a contract in place. Well, he's also kind of just been feeding to just Russell – He's just like, Russell, do everything. Everyone else, figure out a way to well, hang that's, around. Well, that's what's so frustrating. It's like you go from a season last year where you're like, yo, Russ, go get your triple-double. We're going to get you that MVP this year. To like, hey, don't do that anymore because now we have players. Yeah. So you 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 pretty much broke Russell Westbrook last year. You yeah. broke him. You broke yeah. him where like now he's all about just get me my stats. I'm going to get my stats. And this is like I had this argument with Alamo the other day when we were doing the, the all-NBA teams. It's like. Yeah, sure. Russell Westbrook's stats are really good, but he does not make his team better. No, he's so bad in the playoffs because he's all about me. It's and also, him, it's him, 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 it's, him. It's also very easy to, uh, like, uh, it's it's very easy to um, pre-plan against the Thunder. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. It's just like force him to the basket, force him to the basket, trap him, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, like just go ahead. And honestly, and then, let and him then, get his points. And then when the towards the end of the uh, um, regulation, when games are close in clutch situations, yeah. you know what you do? You stand back and then just let him shoot threes because they'll shoot like nine threes in a row, hit two of them, and then. But like, I guess those two were kind of big deals. That's true. It, but it's like it's so frustrating watching him play because I I've always wanted to see him do well because he. He has that drive. He's got that fucking push, but he also has like a mental block. He earlier we were talking about Derrick Rose maybe being like I'm the best blah 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 blah. I think Russell Westbrook is like in his mind he's like there is literally no one better than me now. He's, no he's one not better that than far me off. in the past. He's he's just something about the way he plays where he's just like I am the end all be all of basketball and I will win this pure will with those little like uh, cup suction scars on my back and the tape and all. And that that's fun during the regular season. It's not during the but playoffs. During though. the playoffs, you got to figure it out. Anyways, yeah. um, speaking of KD, since I can't get them off my head, did you see that KD liked the comment on the Instagram post where they were shitting on Russ saying uh, it was his fault? Yes, I that did. That the was so bad. Do you think that was really an accident? Fuck no. There's no way. No. There's no way. This, this is what makes me mad about KD sometimes is like, if he like, if he was more coy about it, and he was just like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I, I must have slipped, I must have slipped. Like if he was more coy about it and playful about it, then we would all like read between the lines and yeah. it would be funnier. But he's so quick to be like, nah, don't read into that shit, man. It's fucking accident. Like there's no fucking way I would have done that. I also would have been fine if he's fucking like just all for it. it well, that would have been way better. There's nothing wrong with being like, look, guys, Russell Westbrook is a great player. But he's a real pain in the ass to play with. Yeah, it's hard to play with him. Literally, no one would have been like, how dare you, KD? Because, like, last year, everyone's like, I can't believe KD left Russ. And then halfway through last season, everyone's like, I really get why KD left Russ. Yeah. And now, it's two seasons later, it's the fucking playoffs, and everyone's just like, no, it. Oh, everyone's going to leave Russ because he is... He's like that kid, I bet when he was a kid, when you were playing with your buddies and you're playing like cops and robbers and shit like that, and you're like, pew, 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 and you're like, Russ, I shot you. And Russ is like, "Uh uh-uh, I had a shield, I had extra (laughs) piles, I'm from the future, you fuck. And you're like, 
Russ, I'm six. Don't say fuck. And also, Whoa. like, I, I shot you. And he's like, That's no, funny. no, you didn't. Like, that That's is funny. what I feel like Russell Westbrook would be like when he was a kid. I have mixed, I have mixed feelings. Also, he him. was the kid that would invite you over to play video games. And then you get there. He only has one controller. He's going to play a game. And you're going to watch him. <laughs> That seems like yeah, Russell that was, Westbrook. That was a uh, past past tense Twitch. That's yeah, what that was. that's it. That was. Um, <laughs> it, it does. That's exactly what Twitch is. So next topic on the follow agenda. follow Yay Network on Twitch. Hey, Yay Network is on Twitch. We we Twitch like once a month. No, no, no. I actually did one just the other week. Hey, L- last week, not we the go. other week. <laughs> um, the Philadelphia 76ers won their first playoff series. They beat the Miami Heat four to one in dominating fashion. Yes, sir. Just dominated the. I wouldn't say dominated, but like it was a very fun series. Yes. Very chippy, very competitive. Ooh, despite was... the fact that the scores were like so very much on like the Philly side. Yeah. The question well, that I have, well, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it doesn't help that throughout that entire series, the best Heat player was Dwayne Wade and his crumbling knees. Well, and like Justin Winslow had a really. He Justice did, Winslow he, had Justice like a Winslow good did do good, series. but like. Um, Hassan Whiteside was straight up pointless. Goran Dragic was having a good series. Yeah, Whiteside was useless. Um, I I gotta get the exact stats, but I read stats of how he played the freaking. Go ahead and talk. Sorry. I just, well, yeah. So I was just gonna say like the the matchup was scary going in, and there was definitely like signs of oh this could be a problem for them, but also you know if they figure it out, it's gonna be a problem for Miami. Now keep in mind like Joel Embiid played okay, but he wasn't Joel Embiid, mm-hmm. and they still dominated. And Ben Simmons played out of his mind. Now, you know who else played out of his mind? JJ Redick and and fucking Bellinelli. He, yeah, he averaged 20 points a game that yeah. I think he ended with 27 in the last game he I think killed, it was. He killed he that. He did series. so great. He killed that series. He's benefiting a lot from the, the amount of space that he's getting because mm-hmm. of Ben Simmons. Um, but if you look at the Sixers and the way that dude, they've only lost one game in the last 21 games that they played. One game. Yeah, that's the last amazing. 21 games. They are the hottest team in basketball by far. And frankly, they're the best team in the East right now. It's not even close. It's not even close. Yeah. Like, Boston has been playing well. Jalen Brown's been hot as fuck. Terry Rozier's had some good games. But they've also had some faults, and they struggle to get rebounds, and, like, they're having some problems. Cleveland's clearly had some problems. Um, and Toronto has not looked good. And, 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 right, I mean, even to this, like, as we speak, Toronto is losing to Washington right now, which <clears> just <throat> speaks to how shaky Toronto is when they get yeah. in the playoffs. The only team right now that looks just like unbeatable is Philadelphia. Yeah. Like uh, th- so their, their, their route to the playoffs. Here or, was the- Hassan Whiteside's totals, not average oh, Lord. totals through those five games in five game series. Hassan Whiteside had 26 points, 16 fouls, 12 turnovers. Good Lord. How many yeah. minutes did he play? Did it say? Does it uh, say? Ch- 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 oh, no. I did see a thing that said, keep talking. I'll Google I know he again. didn't play a lot. <laughs> he he might have only averaged like 15 points. I mean, 15 minutes. Yeah, he played like nothing. It's ridiculous. And it's, what's BPM stand for? Why can't I think of what that means? Uh, Body mass index. <laughs> BPM. BMI. BPM is beats per minute. Yeah, okay. Well, he put up a <laughs> negative 10.8 beats per minute. <laughs> Whatever that means. Blocks? No, it can't be negative 10 blocks per minute. No. That makes absolutely no sense. I don't know what BPM stands for in basketball. Sorry, guys. Beat boxes. <laughs> Beat boxes. Bitch assness per minute. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be in the negative <laughs> uh, because all he did was play terribly uh, and, and then it. complain. Well, there, so there was a rumor that came out today that they're gonna, they're planning on trading him. Yeah, I saw Which that. Which is like, who the fuck is, who's going to take that contract now? Nobody. Who wants him? Who yeah. wants him in today's NBA? Yeah, it's 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 crazy because he's not, and it's it's like everyone's like, oh man, but you know, like it, he's he's what is he like seven seven feet seven one or something like that? Yeah, probably something. And like that. It, you know, great at blocking, it it should be working, but like half of the fucking Sixers that are playing are friggin' like. <laughs> Six ten plus. Oh yeah, That's they the got too, such like, a big. Not team. only do they have a speed advantage in a lot of cases, but they also they also have a size advantage, which you never get the combination yeah. of that. So Co- Covington six nine and Bead seven feet. Simmons is six ten. Ilyasova six ten. Sarik six ten. Like that's a fucking ridiculous team. I know it's crazy. It's so crazy. They're it's... they're fun. They're just fun to watch. It's been really fun to watch them. One of the things that wasn't so fun is to watch the Spurs go down. Um, 
pretty quickly. They, they, they won game four, but, you know, pretty quickly they went down. And, you know, granted, we knew that it was going to be a tough series because they didn't pretty much they pretty much didn't have Kawhi the entire season. Yep. Uh, and then, unfortunately, um, our condolences go out to the Popovich family. You know, Aaron Popovich passed yes. away during the playoffs, so, so Pop couldn't coach. And, you know, for, for obvious reasons. And, you know, again, our condolences go out to the Popovich family. It's, it's a really unfortunate situation to lose anyone especially a, a a significant other somebody who is married for decades and um but in any case you know the spurs go down to to the, the warriors which we all assumed was going to happen early on we're like oh maybe Kawhi's going to come back and then he pretty much nipped that in the butt so you know you're looking at their roster right now and like manu's in his 40s tony parker's like almost 40 um they have a lot of guys on their team that are Getting up there in age. No, yeah. they definitely have some young guys. But how old is Paul Gasol? Like thirty six. Paul, Paul's like thirty six. Yeah. Like they're up there. Like they're all up Lam- there. They've Lamarcus got Lamarcus some... is thirty two. Yeah, I mean they've got a lot of elder statesmen on on there. I don't, I don't think Lamarcus <laughs> is that old actually. I think he is. I, I think he might be like thirty. Maybe I legit think he's thirty two, and I also don't know why I know that. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I don't think he is though, because he came out way after LeBron, because he came out in that that Tyrus Thomas draft. Which is also the Tyrus Thomas. Yeah. Now that is a name I haven't guy. heard. Anyways, um, I guess yeah, he's thirty-two. Oh, good call. July nineteenth, nineteen eighty-five. All right, you got me. I guess he did play in college for a couple of years. He's an old so, guy. So, in from your perspective, a do you think Kawhi's coming back next year? And B, if he doesn't, is this the end of the Spurs dynasty as we know it? I think he does come back next year, and if it does get like. Uh, not great, tumultuous. Hmm? Big word, kids. Um, I think then the Spurs will trade him. Obviously, there's a bajillion freaking like ESPN will not st- like they they were like this is the trade that can make th- make it work. So he ends up with the Sixers. Here's the trade that would make it work. So he ends up with the Celtics. Here's it for the Lakers, the Clippers, the the, the fucking Kangaroos. Like I don't know. Literally every single team would want him. I don't, I don't remember offhand what his contract situation is, but I think he's locked up through next year, basically. Uh, next no, year, no, he's a he's a free agent this summer. No, next year is his last season, and then he has a player option for the following season. See, I thought it was the other way around. No, nah, I it, thought he was a free agent this summer. No, nah, he's got he's got that one. Uh, <laughs> Googling, googling. I don't know. That whole situation's been really weird. Um. God damn it! I'm trying to. Ooh, up. I don't know if this is a food, but now that I just think about this. I'm Nikki Kiles, aka Kawaiawaska Leonard. <laughs> ayahuasca. That's I got it. I don't know what That's I don't know what ayahuasca bad. is though. No, it's a drug. It's a drug. It's a smart, okay. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a drug. <laughs> All I know is Natalie Portman drank it once. Uh, okay, so no, so he's still locked up through next year. Yeah, next so year, he's and he's got a player option for the next one. Play, so, I. I think that they should learn from the Cavaliers and just be like, we're just going to figure this out and mm-hmm. you're going to play next year. Yeah. Like you're going to play next year and we're going to figure this out and don't feed into it. Like the Cavs did where they traded Kyrie because they should have never done that. Nope. They should have never done that. It's ruined their prospects for the next couple of years. And now, I mean, now they got the, they got the Nets pick, which is pretty nice. Yeah. But is it nicer than Kyrie Irving? Never. No, no not no, in no, a million no, no, no. fucking years. But anyways, um, yeah, I think even with Kawhi coming back, the West is just so, so stacked from a talent perspective. And a lot of the teams that maybe didn't make the playoffs this year or were lower seeds this year are young and will be better. The Jazz will be better. Minnesota hopefully will be better. I think they will. You know, I mean, they were the, Denver is going to be better. The ja- the the Timberwolves are the third. The seed Lakers will be better until freaking Jimmy got hurt. Yeah, there's Which just is a lot also of teams. A testament to Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, there's just a lot of teams where I just I I have concerns for the Spurs moving forward. I think there's there's some real there's some real potential for them to to start to fall into mediocrity and just not be the team that we we've, we've known them to be for the last you know twenty some odd years. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, last topic of the day: the NFL draft is tomorrow, and I wondered from your perspective, what current NBA players do you think could play in the NFL, and what position would they play? All right, so we got LeBron James at tight end. Easy. He's the new Gronk. Can we say that Kevin Love would be a quarterback? I mean his his half his full That's a court passes big fucking his, quarterback his full but I would court watch passes that. are stupid. I would watch the Just fuck stupid. out of that. Just stupid. He's so strong. Yeah. Um I think um let's see who else we think could make I it. I feel like Russ would be a fucking phenomenal running cornerback. 
a cornerback is a Hell way better yeah. idea than mine. Like he's so he's so strong and can, wiry. Can you guys tell that I'm not very good at when it comes to football? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like uh, all offense. I would say he'd be like a great cornerback or like a safety of some sort. Yeah, you know? like a like a strong safety. You know, or Ooh. even a free safety. Lonzo Ball would probably make a pretty good quarterback. He, uh, can, maybe. he can also he's make long. full. He can make them fucking full he's court passes. Hands. He's got good fucking eyes. Uh, it's a weird sentence. <laughs> he's got good, good fucking, fucking eyes. eyes, man. Uh, but yeah, I think he could probably be a good quarterback. Um, Jimmy Butler would definitely be out there doing something. Demarcus Cousins, phenomenal left tackle. Yeah, <laughs> like n- the, he's so agile and big. He'd be a great left tackle. Yeah. Um, I think Jimmy would. He's six eight, so you could probably Jimmy throw him. Could do, you know, he could be a, a tight end or a, a tight receiver. end or like, a wide we, receiver. You've seen him like he's always carrying a football around. That's that is true. Thing. Yeah, he That's would. His thing. He would be very good at that. I think he would fucking crush it. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, I think Lance Stevenson could be a running back. Mm-hmm. I think Lance Stevenson could be a solid running back. Somebody who's just gonna like put his head down and run through and dudes. run through. Uh, oh, you know what else would just be exactly like that, but also would be a good cornerback. Marcus Smart and his crazy ass. Oh yeah. Uh, Marcus oh, Smart yeah. would be very good. Love that. Uh, I don't know what, but I, I'm I'm just thinking of uh, the Adam Sandler uh, longest yard movie. Uh, you can just throw Steven Adams at the fullback position <laughs> like they did with the Nandishka guy, who I don't know his real name, and I know he – I think it's Great Kali in the WWE. Yeah, yeah, it would be right. a perfect time to have Matt here. Yeah, he'd, uh, he'd have a lot to add to this. <laughs> Matt, we miss you. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that that's a pretty good one. Steven Adams could definitely just – fucking push people For over sure. <laughs> he we didn't talk about it Yo, he got elbowed just, in the fucking face yeah, broke his nose and just put it back in a place didn't like fucking move didn't flinch and the reason earlier in the episode so i did bring i said that there's a lot of adams family steven adams is the youngest of 18 kids i saw that his sister's like an olympic gold medal winner uh yeah she's a shot putter yeah she tosses things yeah and she's I, like I didn't, six four. I didn't like think by looking at Stephen Adams that his sister was like a sprinter. Yeah, I didn't get that That's vibe true. from him and That's his, true. his lineage. Because like they, I, I, I've only seen a picture of a few of his his uh, family members. Um, also, his dad would be a part of that. What we talked about the most valuable uh, Papa Award because <laughs> his dad has obviously eighteen kids and it's with five different women. Damn. Um, Birthing some champions for yes, a bunch of some are, I mean, you would think like, oh, these two parents, they've birthed so many champions. No, that dude's got Mondo sperm. He's just got yeah, phenomenally is, good sperm. That is the dad. Championship DNA sperm. That's yeah. what that is. So like, that's because that was like everyone's comment when they were like, I can't believe he didn't <laughs> flinch. He just got literally elbowed in the face by Jake. Jake Rodgers a big dude. Big dude. And he's strong. Uh, and Stephen Adams was like, I've, t- I've been getting beat up since I was three. Don't worry about it. By my sister. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, well, anyways, we've gone a little long today, so I think it's probably a good time to wrap it up. Anything we want to talk yeah. about before we uh, before we finish today? Um, you know what, guys? If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Nikki Palooza. I put up pictures of uh, drawings, myself, comedy stuff, shit like that, promotions for my shows. Uh-oh, segue, promoting my shows. <laughs> if you're here, uh, May 6th. Six, that's a Sunday, 8 p.m. I will be performing at the I.O. Theater because Nikki Kiles is technically a graduate. Oh, oh, so I'll be it. doing my uh, I.O. graduate performance classes. Uh, and then May 13th and the 20th, I will be at the uh, Second City, also 8 p.m., also a Sunday for the show called Sin Night. It's a bunch of it's a sketch show about um, the service industry. Um, and... I think that's it because I can't remember what the next date is. I, I'm doing stuff at Comedy Sports. I just can't remember what date it is. I'll remember that for next time. Well, I'm not doing much. Just working. Uh, you may have caught my Facebook AMA where I was talking about podcasting. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. Uh, but per usual, follow MBA on Instagram uh, at MBA Pod on Facebook at MBA Pod and on Twitter at MBA Pod. You can follow me at J underscore Kilas on Twitter and on Instagram um, and on Snapchat, but I don't use that much. Um... Yeah, I guess uh, don't forget to rate and review the podcast. Please do subscribe. Give us five stars if you feel so inclined to do so. We really appreciate it. Also, you can follow us on Twitch, Yay Network. You can follow us on YouTube, The Yay Network. You can email us, theyaynetwork.com, or theyaynetwork at gmail.com. We have a website, theyaynetwork.com. Um, what else could you do? You can go listen to, rate, comment, subscribe, and follow to our other uh 
podcast called Eat Yay Love. And don't forget Double Yay. Our other other one, Eat Double Yay. I just said Eat Yay yeah, Love. And we have a new baseball podcast for the baseball fans out there. Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, NBA Pod. You can follow Matt on Twitter, Fat Reed. You can follow him on Instagram, Fat R33D. As Matt would always like to say, you know what to do. <laughs> All right. For Nikki, for Jay, this has been NBA. We're out.